Our third video from chapter eight is a shorter one, probably a relief after all the ideas that were in video two there. But in our third video, we're going to explain delocalization energy and that extra stability that comes from it in terms of molecular orbital theory. I remember MO theory from the beginning of the semester. Okay. Specifically here, we're not worried about looking at sigma bonds, but let's look at the unhybridized p orbitals. Okay. If we're thinking about these dienes where everything's sp2 hybridized, they have a remaining unhybridized p orbital. And these p orbitals can come together in phase or out of phase, just like before. And we're looking at this pi bonding MO diagram with these p orbitals. Remember, anytime we're looking at an MO diagram, the number of orbitals is conserved, right? So the number of orbitals that goes in is equal to the number of orbitals that comes out. So here, and this isn't an amazing slide from the text because there should be another p orbital shown over here, but we have two p atomic orbitals that come together to form two new molecular orbitals in the middle. So if you have these printed out, it would actually be wise of you to sketch another p orbital over here. Okay, so two p atomic orbitals that come together to form two new molecular orbitals, two in, two out. And we can think about them again coming together in phase, which is a bonding interaction, or out of phase, which is an anti-bonding interaction. And when they're out of phase, there's a node between the two of them. Okay. Bonding being lower in energy, right? These things, these electrons fill from the alpha-bow principle, right? From the bottom up, lowest energy to highest energy. Okay. So that means we get two electrons in this lower energy bonding MO and none up here okay because each carbon each p orbital had one electron to contribute okay? so that's how a basic pi bond is formed okay? and this is old information but if you don't remember it right overlap of orbitals in phase helps atoms come together those are bonding interactions that's what makes bonds when they're out of phase, that's contributing to pulling atoms apart, hence anti-bonding, where there's a node between the nuclei. Uh, so a lot of that's old information, right? We knew that from molecular orbital information from Gen Chem and earlier in the semester. Let's extend it a little bit further to look at butadiene here. We're gonna consider the p orbital for each one of the four carbons. Okay. Looking at one, three butadiene, with the most standard form and the two minor resonance contributors to form this overall resonance hybrid. We know from earlier videos that we have four pi electrons, two here, two here, total of four, that are delocalized throughout the four carbons. So how does this play in, in terms of molecular orbital theory? Uh, well, if I consider the four p orbitals coming together, this is just showing one, but again, there's a total of four coming together. And there's four possibilities for how they can come together. Right? Everything in phase, that's the lowest energy. Okay? One node in between, two nodes and three nodes. Okay? So here we've got all bonding interactions and no nodes. And as we go up, we get one, two, three nodes and one fewer bonding interactions, right? This has three bonding interactions on the bottom, one between these two, one in the middle, and then another one over here. Three bonding interactions, zero nodes. Here we have two bonding interactions, one node, one bonding interaction with two nodes. And up top, we have zero bonding interactions and three nodes. Okay. Now, how does this relate to my molecule? Well, these molecular orbitals result, as you already know, from the linear combination of atomic orbitals, right, LCAO. And the overall energy of these new molecular orbitals is lower, right, notice energy on the y-axis here, the new MOs here are lower in energy than the regular p orbitals. And because the electrons, right, are in those lower energy molecular orbitals, that's the delocalization energy. Okay? The energy of the electrons has net gone down, just like we saw it do in ethene. Right? This is the old slide before. Here, this is for butadiene on the left. This is for ethene over here. Draw a line between those. They're two different graphs, just kind of superimposed on one another. 
but notice how those are lower in energy. That's where delocalization is coming from. And a rule, a helpful tip, right? As your molecular orbitals increase in energy, so from we go from the bottom to the top, the number of nodes increases and the number of bonding interactions decreases. So I'm jumping back a slide to 52 here. Here it's all bonding interactions, no nodes. Here it's all nodes, no bonding interactions. And you can just kind of step your way up between the two, as we'll see in this chapter. Right? So you go from zero node, one node, two nodes, three nodes. Three bonding interactions, two, one, zero. And setting it up stepwise like that mentally will help you draw those MO diagrams, yeah, which is kind of what this slide here is explaining. When we consider their net contributions, the lower energy ones have more bonding interactions than they do antibonding, so they contribute to bonding overall. The top two have net antibonding, right? They have more nodes than they do bonding interactions. So if we look at this again, because, oh, sorry, I jumped an extra slide. Because all of my electrons are in bonding interactions, that's helping this molecule. If all of these were filled, that, then we wouldn't form a bond. Just like if you drew the MO diagram for diatomic helium, as it doesn't form because the contribution to bonding and anti-bonding is equal. But here we're contributing more to bonding, we're getting that delocalization energy. Okay. And we can relate this to our molecule. Right? Where is the greatest degree of bonding interactions? Right? It's between C1 and C2 and C3 and C4, right? Because they've got bonding interactions here and here, bonding interactions here and here. But there's also a degree of bonding between C2 and C3. And we know right, by resonance that if you draw the three resonance contributors, I'll go ahead and jump all the way back to it, right? looking at those resonance contributors. Well, yeah, this is the most stable resonance contributor with electron density between C1, C2, and C3, C4. But if you look at the minor contributors, yeah, there's some bonding density between C2 and C3 as well. And so you see molecular orbital diagrams and those resonance contributors kind of relate to one another. Yep. We also right, have molecular orbitals that are symmetric and asymmetric. And another tip, if you're drawing these things, you always alternate things that are symmetric and asymmetric, right? Drawing a plane of symmetry down the middle. This one's symmetric, asymmetric, symmetric, asymmetric. So that's another tip for drawing these things out. Yep. Two new terms from this video. These are going to relate to the end of chapter eight, the highest occupied molecular orbital and the lowest occupied molecular orbital, abbreviated as HOMO and LUMO. The highest occupied molecular orbital is the highest energy MO that has electrons. And the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, right, you can get this right from the name, it's the lowest energy molecular orbital that does not have electrons. So again, if I jump back, this is the HOMO, this is the LUMO, and electron transitions between those can contribute to reactions, right? important transitions for electronics. So going again, comparing things from the second video, 1,3-butadiene, which we've talked about for all of this video, that has delocalized electrons because all of those p orbitals can overlap with one another. 1,4-pentadiene has that sp3 hybridized carbon in the middle. So now it doesn't have a p orbital. These electrons can't delocalize. 1,4-pentadiene has isolated dienes. 1,3-butadiene, they're conjugated. Okay. So know those difference, differences, conjugated versus isolated or localized. Uh, no delocalization energy and how that contributes to stabilization. Those are really important ideas, right? Explained before with resonance, now with MO theory, because in our fourth video, we're gonna take that and see how that knowledge and delocalization energy affects molecular property.